So I want to start. Preach it. Well, anyway, I have a question to ask first. Um, how many of you out there aren't good at asking for help? Okay. All right. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk a little bit about the reason why sometimes we don't ask for help. I don't know. Maybe you're kind of like muddle your way through life and, you know, you kind of do things by yourself because you really don't want to ask people for help sometimes. And, you know, maybe you're like me. You know, I go get groceries and I'll have all these different bags to carry and, you know, I take like six or eight at one time. You know, where your, your fingers are literally blue and falling off because those plastic bags, you know, just tear into them so much and you're trying to carry them in or... Maybe like me that, you know, you move furniture and you'll risk breaking your back instead of asking somebody for help. I'm a compulsive furniture mover arounder. Um, yes, I, I do this quite a bit. I like to change things up and that's because I hate spiders and I, it's been proven if you read anything about spiders that spiders hate movement. So the more you move your furniture, the less spiders you have, guys. This is why I live my life the way I do. So um, I'm always moving furniture around, and uh, I've gotten really good even at moving really heavy furniture because I don't like to always ask for help because I move it so often. Um, how many of you guys are like me that a lot of times, you know, you're trying to do those last few things, you know, don't ask anybody for help, but, you know, you want to clean this and do this and get this done and everything else, and you're in a hurry, you're trying to get somewhere, but you don't want to ask somebody for help so you're just late getting to where you need to be because you're trying to finish up all those little things instead of asking for help. Men, you guys always get this bad rap. Uh, how many of you guys don't like to ask for directions? You know, you'd rather just, well, now we've got it so easy. You know, years ago, you know, that, that, that went over better when you talked about it. But now, you know, we all got those iPhones that tell us step by step and there's no worries. So unless you forgot your phone, you don't have to ask anybody anything, right? How many of you guys would sacrifice your health or sleep to accomplish all that you have to do instead of asking someone for help? You'll just stay up late. You're going to be like, burn that midnight oil. You're just going to do that, and you're going to get up early, and you're going to get everything done. And, you know, there's people around you are like, I could have helped with that, but you don't ask. Well, last week I started this message series and it was all about this simple scripture verse. Very simple, but like so amazingly vital to our faith. And when I read it, I thought, wow, this is so good for us to remember. And it's Philippians 4, 6 that says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. I thought, wow, so simple. So simple but so much wrong with how we live our lives in that little bit of a verse too because I said we do just the opposite of what it says. So instead what we do is we worry about everything and we don't pray about anything so often. So today what I want to talk to you about a little bit is though self-reliance. And I know that, you know, our society kind of gives you the pat on the back. You know, you're a go-getter. You can get things done. You're self-reliant. I can take care of everything on my own. And I want to kind of explain to you that that self-reliance in Christianity isn't always so good. It's actually something that we need to be thinking about that maybe we should change instead. Because it's not really in our health good for us by doing everything all the time and risking our bodies and our health but it's also not good in our relationship with God either. This self-reliance, thinking that you can accomplish everything on your own without God's help, will eventually burn you out, and you're not going to make it. So this verse, and so many other verses throughout the Bible that you can read, constantly tells us that we need to go to him, that we need to ask for his help, that we need to trust in him, hold tight to him, let him be our anchor, let him be our God that helps us through our battles. But I think somewhere along the line, we've kind of believed this lie from the enemy, I think deceived in our culture, to think that we can just do this all on our own all the time and not ask for help and just keep plodding on because, you know, if I keep plodding on, I can make it. But I think that's why so many people give up because they really don't ask for God's help in their life. And I think it's because really it's risky, isn't it? I think even in life itself, when you ask people for help, it's risky. 
Because in that risk is that somebody actually, you're kind of vulnerable in those moments, aren't you? You're like vulnerable, like I can't get it done, like you're not good enough to get something accomplished or something like that. We also don't like to ask people for help because we kind of don't like the idea that we're admitting that we need somebody else, that we need their help. And what it does in that sometimes that giving, asking for help also, it, it kind of feels like you're giving away some of your power. You give away some of your power because they have the opportunity then to say no. And then it hurts. And then it hurts when you have to ask and they say no. I definitely have found that some of my struggles in life. You know, they always talk about the four love language. Well, I figured out really early on when I read that book that I am definitely an acts of service person. Um, how I show love and how I receive love is through service. If there's something that um, you need, I'll, I'll help you. You know, I'll do that. And then I also like to be shown love by someone doing things for me. Gifts are nice. Nice words. They're awesome. But I really appreciate it when someone does something for me because that really does show love to me. But in that, understand, a person who has acts of services or love language, it's really, really risky for them. Because when you ask somebody to do something for you, they might not do it, and that really is kind of like almost like you're just risking whether or not they love you. Because if they don't do it, you're like immediately you go to, well, they don't love me. They don't love me. That's why they don't do that. I've gotten better with it. I've definitely uh, struggled with that in the past, but um, I've gotten better as the years have gone by. I now call my husband when I have groceries, and I say, hey, can you help me carry these in? Not just because of arthritis, but because of the fact that I know he actually does like to help me, and he wants to be there for me. I've gotten better with asking people for help to do certain things in my life, which I never used to do. I still struggle with it sometimes, especially when you know someone else is busy, right? You're like, well, I don't want to ask them to do something for me. And half the time, those people would say, well, that would have been nothing for me to help you. I would have definitely helped you to do that. But I think I've gotten better only because of the assurance of love of those people around me and also that assurance of love from God that I have, that I can go to God and ask for anything too. God has proven his love for me over and over and over again so many times that I can definitely risk asking him for anything now. So I find in that verse, when it says Philippians 4, 6, it says, don't worry about anything, instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Like I said, we do the opposite. We do the opposite of what it says, but then we're also so bad at doing the second part too, just asking him, not telling him what it is that we need, and then also we don't thank him for all the things that he's done for us. We're really, really bad at it. I think this, this, this verse should be something that we should all think about and really like try to do better at. I think it sums up why so many Christians, so many Jesus followers are so anxious and tense and, and burned out and ineffective, just ineffective in their faith. So the Bible reminds us in Psalm 121, 1 and 2, it says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. What that's saying is when we need help, we look up. It's as simple as that. It's a very simple, simple message. When we feel weak, when we feel like we can't go on, when we're in that deep valley, we look up at God and we say, I need your help to get me through. You know, we can trust in God as a father to us. And that's one of the ways that he describes himself, right? Yes, he's a friend. He's a savior. But he says, I'm a father. And I think sometimes we don't really lean into the idea and understanding, maybe because of age and maybe it is because of how we're taught in culture, that him being a father seems odd, but that's what he wants us to understand. We are his children. He loves us. He cares for us. No matter how old you are, you are still a child to God. He loves and adores you and wants you to call on him for help. I think when he sees us struggling and trying to do everything by yourself, I think sometimes he's like, man, I was just waiting for you, just waiting for you to call out to me and ask for help. And nothing, nothing. 
Well, some years ago, John and I, we were getting ready to go to bed. It was about 11 o'clock at night, and, you know, we're just settling in. And I saw my phone lit up on the side of my bed. And I'm like, well, that's weird. Someone's calling me. So I answered it, and, of course, it's Cameron. And he's telling me that he broke down on the side of the road on Route 52. And he says, I need Dad to come help me. And I said, okay. So we immediately got dressed and, you know, immediately got the truck and went out and, you know, helped him out and helped him pull his truck back home. But the only way we got to help him is that he called us. That's how it works. You know, if Cameron had come in the very next day and said, I'm exhausted I was on Route 52, I broke down, and I walked all the way home. It was just so tiring, and I'm just so tired today. The first thing John and I would have said to him is like, why didn't you call us? We would have totally been there to help you in a minute. I think that's what God's asking a lot of you. When you're tired, when you're exhausted, when you get in a bind, when you don't know what you're going to do in life, He's there saying, well, why aren't you calling on me? Why aren't you asking me for help? I'm here to help you like a good father does. You know, asking God for help is good for us, but understand it also really, really cements the idea that we have trust in him, that we have dependence on him, that we actually think of him in that way, that he, he wants to help us, that when we're struggling... Psalm 46, 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. Man, life is hard, isn't it? Life is difficult. Why we don't reach out and ask the God who created all things and wants to help us so much, why we don't go to him first when we're struggling, why we don't ask for help, and why we try to keep doing things on our own over and over again, I don't know. We've got to change this. I think so many of the things that we don't ask for, he's like, I was just hoping you'd ask. I was just hoping that you'd ask me. Hebrews 4.16 says, so let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. There's desires that you have, things and and that you want to do and accomplish in your life. Deep hopes and and aspirations for your life, for your kids' lives, maybe for your business, for your health, for all the things that are going on in your life. And he's like, there's so much that I could do for you, but you just don't ask for them. Why not? Why is it we don't tell God what we need? I wonder sometimes, do we just think that he doesn't care enough, that he's not going to listen? Maybe he, we think he he's just doesn't care. Maybe we think that we don't deserve it. Maybe because just like Adam and Eve in that Garden of, Garden of Eden, maybe we really feel like we don't deserve it. Maybe in shame we kind of pull back because we think we're not perfect enough for God to help us. Understand he knows you're not perfect. <laughs> He created you, and there's a reason why Jesus came, is to be your perfection. If we're living in shame and not going to him for the good things, we're just shortchanging ourselves. We have to have a, a thought in our mind, a plan that God wants to be there to help us. Maybe you look at God as a bad dad. Maybe you don't think he really loves you enough to take care of you. Maybe you think he's unwilling to help. Maybe that's because you had a a situation that was your life. Maybe you had a dad wasn't there for you every time you needed something. You know, I think that if you've had that, you really just have to, like, push in and push past that. If you really feel as though God is that bad dad, you have to start pushing that thought aside and understand that he loves you so much that he died for you, sent his son to die for you. And that he loves you despite all things. Maybe you're just really afraid to ask for things because you don't like feeling vulnerable. Well, that just goes on to pride. That you're too prideful to ask for things. Pride's never going to get you anywhere except for exhausted. Understand. Maybe 
you've kind of given up. Maybe you've asked for God for so many things in the past and he didn't come through for you. So you don't want to risk being vulnerable again. And maybe you just quit asking. It's like, well, he doesn't, he doesn't answer. Well, understand that a lot of times he doesn't answer because maybe we didn't do things correctly or maybe it's just not the right time. Matthew 7, 7, 8 says, Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks the door will be open. You know, your answers to your asks of God are only going to be one of three things. Either it's going to be yes, no, or later. Sometimes I think we let that later get the best of us. We don't get that answer right away, so we're like, you know what, he didn't answer. He's, he's not going to answer for me. He's not gonna, I'm not going to get what I need. So we quit. But that's exactly the wrong thing to do. We need to keep reaching out to him over and over and over again. You know how many times I've asked God to heal my body, to heal my knee, to take away arthritis, to take away the pains that I have. And it doesn't happen, but it doesn't stop me from asking over and over and over again. Sometimes I really wonder with these things that we struggle with. Maybe it really is a test. Maybe it's this idea that we are supposed to keep asking. Maybe it's if he would just ask and we'd get so quickly, maybe God would just say, look, if you think I'm some sort of magic genie, <laughs> that I'm just here to just get of your every desire. Instead, what he says, no, just keep relying on me, keep trusting in me, keep asking me, put your hope in me, keep doing those things. So that verse again, Matthew 7, 7, 8, it says, keep on asking, you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. For everyone asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the doors will be open. Three powerful verbs. Understand, Christianity is all about movement and verbs. If you think it's just a noun, you're just a Christian and that's it, I'm telling you, there is so much more work that comes in out of that. But ask, seek, knock. Asking is making those requests to God. Simple. Ask him. Ask him what you want. Seeking is searching for his will and what his guidance is for your life. That's by reading your, your Bible. That's by like searching and asking people around you who maybe have gone through battles before. Keep seeking out what it is that he has for you. When you, you don't have to ask certain questions because it's all revealed pretty much in the Bible what he wants for you. So some of the things we ask for we know are even against what God says because he's already made it clear what he desires for your life, what his will is. Knocking is believing and trusting in a God that wants to help us. So when we knock on that door, it's constantly believing and trusting in a God that wants to help us through our struggles. Like I said, keep on knocking. It's not a one-time event. We don't just knock once, and that's it. You know, just recently, this summer, I finally got a doorbell for my back door because my grandkids live right the house behind me. And a lot of times, those little doors, those little fingers, don't, don't knock very loud. And I'd be like, oh, I didn't even hear you guys. So I went and got a doorbell so that they could ring it now. And I love watching them on the doorbell. <laughs> I love it. It's like my biggest thing is when they do come over and they're standing around waiting for grandma to come answer the door, I love watching their faces. Sometimes I think that's how God is with us. That he just waits for us, watches, waits for our knock, watches our faces with love and adoration because he cares about you. And I think sometimes we don't understand that sometimes when he doesn't answer right away, we just keep on knocking. We just keep on knocking on that door. So now we know with that simple verse, like I said, that Paul wrote, worry is not good for us because it steals from the goodness of our day, right? That we need to take all of our concerns and pray, telling God what it is that we need. And then we have one other thing to do with that, and that is to 
thank him for what he's done. To do it all with thankfulness. And this is where I think a lot of you guys too, you screw up, you don't do it right. He gives you something great and you know what you're like, don't even acknowledge the goodness that you've gotten. Philippians 4, 6, again, like I said, I'm just going to keep reading it to you over and over again, hoping that it gets into your, your spirit. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Man, isn't it nice to be appreciated? All of us want to be appreciated. All of us are, are hoping that someone thanks us when we do something nice for them. Makes you wonder, isn't it, that why we're so confused by why we don't thank him more? Because, I mean, the desire to be appreciated, where did it come from? Where did this desire to want to be thanked come from? Could it be because we're made in the image of God who also wants to be thanked and have gratitude expressed to him? I think it is. I think it's a God desire. There's something that God wants us to feel and then we go back and we give him that same appreciation when he does something for us. He has goodness and he has grace, and he has given you both if you're walking with him. He should be appreciated for that. I think saying please, just a simple please and thank you is so important. What is one of the first things that we teach our kids when they're growing up? Say please and thank you. Why is it such a simple, simple instruction we give to children as we raise them? We ourselves forget as we follow God. We don't say please, and we don't say thank you. And it's so important. When we come to God with gratitude, I think expressing our thanks, um, and telling him what, it, what we need, it opens the door to communication. It opens the door to him. And I think we all want that open door to him, don't we? I mean, nobody wants to have to feel like, you know, God's so far away. It's like when you, you ask for something and you see God's done it and he's given you these blessings and you thank him for it, you feel like this open door of communication is just here between you two. Colossians 2, 6, and 7 says, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. That is the key, guys. I'm telling you, it is a key to your life to be overflowing with thankfulness. I love that thought. I love the thought to being overflowing with thankfulness, that you can't keep it to yourself because it's just like oozing from every pore, <laughs> that it's just out and about everything that happens is just to notice how good things are. And that's sometimes not easy when you feel like things aren't good. But recognize in the other blessings he's done for you. You know, do you get up? Are you breathing? Tell him thanks. You know, we get out, we look at the sky, we look at the, the sun, we look at the, the grass, the trees, the flowers. Thank you. You know, God could have left this earth be nothing but black and disgustingness, but instead he gave you a taste of what heaven's going to be. The beauty that we see today when we live our lives, you go out there and you see something beautiful, it's going to be minuscule compared to what is going to be offered to us in heaven. But I think when he we look around and we see what we have, the good things, and we appreciate the goodness of God and the, the things that he's given us and the beauty all around us. I think that there's something about that that when we express that back to him, that it, it just makes him happy. I think many of us would really be hard-pressed to think that we're really overflowing with thankfulness. I think some of us are overflowing with something else. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Uh, maybe it's stress. Maybe it's just stress because you really don't ask people for help. 
Maybe you just live this life of just constant turmoil, constant stress, getting things done. I have to accomplish this task, and then the next task, and then the next task, and you're just so stressed out that you're just overflowing with stress, and that the people around you recognize you are overflowing with stress. Been there, done that. Maybe it's jealousy. Maybe you're overflowing with jealousy. This is a good time of self-introspection for us to really think, what is it that overflows out of us? Maybe it's jealousy because you see what other people have and then what you don't have. So instead of being appreciative of the things that you've been given, all you focus on is what you have not instead. That's a real struggle for a lot of people. Maybe you are struggling and overflowing with worry. Maybe worry is your battle. Maybe it's just that constant battle of thinking and stressing and worrying about what life is, what's going to happen and how your life's going to go and how things are going to happen with your kids and what's going to take place in the world. And it's just overflowing and worry. Well, I want you to think about what it is that you feel most and think about most because I think that's probably what you're really overflowing with. So when you start to notice that, maybe start to think that's something I need to change and I need to instead overflow with thankfulness. And I was thinking about the idea that when was the last time that you were thankful that your shoes were comfortable? You don't, do you? When do you think about your shoes being comfortable? You don't. The only thing you think about is when they're uncomfortable, right? Right. Why is it that we notice the bad thing, but we don't notice the good thing, right? Why is it that we don't think about the blessings we have until they're removed, until those things are removed from us? Maybe good things that were happening in your life, and then, you know, you didn't really thank God so much for them when you were in them, when you were given these great things, but when things change and they're removed, that's you're like, ah, oh. I don't have that no more. We definitely don't think about our health until it's gone, do we? Everybody says that. Everybody talks about their health. You know, I remember, I, some days I just, I'm like, I'm just so surprised. You know, you forget as we age how I remember sitting cross-legged like an Indian sits on the floor. I'm thinking, those days are long gone. I am never doing that again. And then I think about the fact of just getting down and trying to get up. When you have really bad arthritis or you have something wrong with your knee, you don't get up like you used to. I always say, if anybody's bad coming for us, save yourselves. Because I ain't getting up in time to go with you. It's going to take me a while. It's not going to happen. But we don't appreciate our health until it's gone. How many of us, when we're feeling really great, we don't sit there and say, thank you, God, I feel so great. Very few of us do that. We go through sickness. Man, you know if you've had the flu. <laughs> when you get sick, you're like, oh, oh, this is terrible. This is just terrible. And then you feel a little bit better, and you're like, oh, I'm so thankful that I'm done with that, I, don't you? You're supposed to. But what is it about our human nature that we tend to skip over the simple, positive things in life? And what we do is we just focus in on all the negative. So much negativity, so much defeat, instead of victory and thankfulness. And we just really struggle with that. Ephesians 5, 19 and 20 says, Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Everything. What would happen to our lives? What would be so amazing in our lives that could change if we actually got up and noticed all the good instead of the bad? What if we got out of bed and we just looked and thought, wow, you know, I have a house. I have, you know, shelter. I have a place to live. I have people that might drive me crazy, but they're my people that drive me crazy. 
What if we got up and we actually just were appreciative about everything that we've been given instead? But I think it's sad because instead of being grateful, what we do is we grumble, don't we? We're grumblers. That's what most of us have overflowing out of us. We're grumbling. I think if we took a closer look at our days, I think we'd be surprised at how much grumbling instead of gratefulness we do. I think we need to change that. Because that simple, simple verse explains to us that if we would do it differently, that I think God could give us differently. I just wonder sometimes if maybe God doesn't answer our prayers because he doesn't see us being all that grateful for the things that he's already given us. Maybe he's like, you know, I I wanted to give you that, but I don't even see you being thankful for the things that I've already given you. It's like we do with children, right? Our children ask for more and more and more, and we're like, well, you don't even appreciate what I've already given you. Why should I give you more? See, I think God was so brilliant in being our father because it's so relatable for us to understand if we raise children. Maybe he would like us to walk through life with an attitude of gratitude instead of fumbling around in our grumbling, right? An attitude of gratitude instead of fumbling and grumbling. That's what he wants from you. We need to change the way we live our lives, for sure. I'm not trying to diminish your life struggles. I know people have had it rough. I know that life is not great. I know that there are real deep valleys that we go through and real struggles, and I know it can get very, very difficult. And sometimes those, those thoughts of feeling like you're defeated can take over. You feel like nothing's going to go your way, and we can't make it, and you get in this attitude of almost to the point of self-pity, and we got to get out of that, guys. we got to get out of this idea of looking at what we don't have, and we got to look at what we could have instead. I truly believe that living a life of gratitude is, is the handle to the door to open even more up to God's blessings and goodness. I really, really do. I know that's worked well for me. I know that's worked well for my family. I am grateful. I am so grateful to God. That's one thing I can say I do well. I praise God well. I am grateful to him for all he's done for me. And I believe that God wants to do that for each one of us. You know, I I just think that sometimes I wonder, I really wonder if sometimes we're going to meet God in the future and we are gonna, he's going to talk to us and he's going to say, man, there's so many things that you missed out on because you lived your life filled with worry instead of praying, you know? You didn't receive all that he wanted to give you because you simply didn't ask him for it. And then he wanted to pour out so much more favor and blessing on you, but you weren't thankful for what he'd already given you. Wouldn't that be a shame to get to the end and have that happen? How horrible would it be to think that it was all on us? Not him, not the good father that wants to do all these things, but it's us, that we shortchanged ourselves. I totally believe that God has so much more for us than what we ask him for. I learned really early on, because I read the Bible, and I'm going to tell you guys, you're missing out if you don't read God's word. Because I read through the Bible how many things that we are allowed to ask for. Things that he says he wants to give us. The blessings he wants to pour upon us. The desires of our hearts. The favor of God. I truly believe in that. I believe without a doubt that I have prayed for the favor of God to be upon my life. And on my children's lives. And I totally have seen God pour favor upon them over and over again because I asked for it. And also because I was trying to follow him and I was thankful to him for the things he's done. I believe there's been doors that have been opened to Acts Church out of that prayer of favor. I totally believe that's true. I believe without a doubt that God has given me wisdom that I did not deserve, but because I asked for it. I asked God, give me wisdom 
Give me more wisdom than, than I could possibly imagine. I want to know more of what your word says. I want to know what you have for my life. And I've asked for wisdom. These are the things he wants to give you. But we don't ask. It's not that he has a favorite. You're all his favorites. He loves each one of you. And he wants to give all that to you. Psalm 34, 1 through 6 says, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation, I prayed, and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. That's what God wants us to do. That's what he wants to give us. He wants to pour blessings upon you. He wants to give you so many good things if we would only ask and then be grateful. Please and thank you. Like I said, those simple little words that we teach our children are a key to your faith. Really, really important. Philippians 4, 6 again. I'm going to read it to you again. I want you to just put this down in your heart. I want you guys to just live and breathe this scripture verse. So simple. Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. That's the key to having a good life. Pray about anything and everything. Ask for anything and everything. And then thank him for anything and everything. You know, I always think, it's, isn't it so weird that we like have this idea that God doesn't want to give us more? Like somehow he thinks that we should live in this poor, desperate, struggling, crawling out of the hole kind of like life. And that's not the life he has for you at all. His life is to pour abundance upon you, joyfulness, goodness, gifts, favor, wisdom. With your head held high, not in shame, but just asking and awaiting the things he wants to give you. I really hope that this message these last two weeks really touches you that way. I think we really need to be encouraged sometimes just how much God loves us. I think we can get so caught up in the craziness of the world and all the things that go on and we don't really stop and think about how much God desires us to come close, you know, pray, ask, be thankful. Simple. If you could get up and you could do that every day, if you can get up in the morning and just say, God, please make my day. Please help me out. Help my family. Help the world. And then start to really like thank him for everything that he's done for you and be grateful. I really truly believe that you could end 2024 in a better way. I really think that 2025 could be a year that could be just filled with so much blessings if we would lean into what God has for us instead. Well, I'm going to pray for you. And I hope that you receive that and I hope you take that to heart. I hope tomorrow when you get up and you have a pain and you're struggling that you don't focus on the pain, but you instead focus on him instead. Well, Lord, you are amazingly good you are a good, good father. And I am so thankful for you in my life. I am so thankful for the things that you've done for me, Lord God, the things that you have forgiven me for, the things that you have blessed me with. You have done so much more than I deserve. And I am so thankful for everything. Lord, I just pray for each person that's here that's going to watch online. I just pray that there's something inside them that would just come alive that they would recognize how much it is that you love them and care for them and desire to have them come close to you and ask for things and do it with a grateful heart. I just pray that you would just help us all to become those people. 
Lord, I just ask that you would just bless your children. Pour blessings upon them, Lord. Help them to feel you like never before. I pray that they'd feel you and in that they would reach out to you more and more. We thank you for everything that you're going to do in our lives, Lord. We praise you and can't thank you enough. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.